Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I want to talk about three things that I think a lot of jazz guitar players are wasting practice time on. And it's because they think that they have to know this and they have to think like that. And usually this is connected to a myth or a misunderstanding. And actually, when you're working on stuff like this, if it's not helping you, then it's kind of working against you. This is probably the first video that I've ever made where I'm telling you to not practice something instead of giving you stuff to practice. But I'm of course also curious about what you think. So if one of these topics is something that you enjoy working on, or maybe that's something that you find really helpful, then let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. Sight reading. As a guitar player, it's not that likely that you're going to get called for a gig where you have to show up and sight read a lot of material. Those gigs are just not that common. It's much more likely that you get called and then you have to sight read and interpret the chord symbols of lead sheets when you're playing behind somebody who's singing or playing the melody. And that's a way more common kind of gig and that's actually a more practical skill to have and to work on. I think the myth or the misunderstanding with this is that people think that if they can sight read something then they can also absorb the information a lot faster. So the thinking is that if I can sight read this Boris Montgomery solo then it's as if I have transcribed it and it's also in my playing. I can't emphasize enough how wrong I think that idea is. You don't learn music by sight reading it. If you want to have something in your system and something that's part of your vocabulary that you can use when you're improvising, then it's a completely different process because you want to hear it in your head, you want to really know it, and you also want to have, have it so in your system that it's flexible and that you can connect it to other things while you're playing a solo. And if you're sight reading, that's really not what's happening. And there's an easy way to test this because if you try to sight read something or if you ask somebody who's a good sight reader, to sight read something. Afterwards, take the paper away and ask them how much they remember. To be honest, I think that if you want to work on being more effective in absorbing new ideas, then what you want to work on is getting better at learning music by ear. I think that's the fastest way to really get into your system as something that you can also use while you're playing. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't work on reading. Reading music is important and it's also very useful and very practical in a lot of different situations, both in terms of playing music from other people that are giving you sheet music, where it doesn't have to be sight reading necessarily. And of course, also a lot of learning materials in jazz are not coming with tablature. So you kind of want to be able to read the, the notes and the sheet music to absorb that information. My point is that you shouldn't spend your practice time trying to sight read a lot of music. I think you're much better off trying to read music, but then think about the fact that it's music. So you want to read music so that you can play it as music as well. And you don't want to focus on the sight reading part of it. You want to focus on getting it to be as good music, as good a performance as you can, even while you're reading it. Voice leading. When Herbie Hancock is playing behind Miles Davis in I Fall In Love Too Easily, do you then think that he's thinking about how the flat 7 is going to the sharp 11 and the 5th is moving to the flat 9 when changing from one chord to the next? Or do you think that he's maybe trying to connect something where he knows how the entire chord sounds, he's listening to Miles, and he's also trying to make his comping into something that makes sense as a musical whole? I think a lot of people waste a lot of time when they're playing and when they're practicing, thinking about voice leading. Of course, it's important to check out how the chords move and which notes go where. And it's really useful to know all these things, both when you're trying to come up with arrangements or coming up, working on, on your comping. And of course, maybe even more so when you're working on your improvised lines and trying to see how you can connect one chord to the next. But there is a time and a place for everything. And if you're playing a piece of music with other people or if you're practicing, then probably that's not the place where you want to think about voice leading. You want to think about the music, you want to hear the chords as complete things and not think about all these detail levels. It's the same as you don't want to think about every note that you're playing in a solo. And instead of just spending all this time thinking about voice leading, then I think a lot of people forget that it's just as important to just turn on the metronome on two and four and then come through some standards and see how that feels and how it sounds. And if you can actually take all the knowledge and all the chord voicings and make them into something that sounds okay as a piece of music. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. 
I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these jazz guitar music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. A million skills. You have to remember that 99% of the music that you really like, that you want to check out and have in your playing, is really made with the major scale, the harmonic minor scale, and the melodic minor scale. So for that reason, I think it really makes sense to think about whether you want to spend a lot of time checking out a hundred exotic scales that you may use once for a few bars in one song. And this is especially true if the reason that you want to check out some exotic scales is that you want to have some new melodies. Probably it's going to be much more efficient if you work on just getting better at playing melodies with the scales that you already know. Mainly because if you're checking out some new structures in there, then this is something that fits on one chord. But these are the scales that you use on a lot of different chords. So it's going to add to your vocabulary in a lot of different places. So make sure that you know all the material that you can use to make melodies. Work on your diatonic triads, your seventh chords, your quartal arpeggios and spread voice triads and make sure that you can make melodies with this. That's much more efficient than checking out the Gypsy Mixolydian flat 9 sharp 4 scale and then trying to use that on beat 3 and 4 in bar 17. As I said in the beginning of this video, I'm really curious what you guys think. Is there a topic that I should have included in my list here? Or is there one of these topics that I did talk about that is really your favorite thing to work on in jazz guitar? Then leave a comment. I think this is something that's really useful to discuss and I think we need to be aware of whether we're wasting our time or whether we're thinking about things in the wrong way. If you want to check out another video that I did, which is talking about different ways of thinking about learning jazz, then check out this video where I'm talking about the 10 commandments of learning jazz guitar. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And that's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.